Hello and welcome to Alfons Zeilais. My name is Johanna Nagelsbach. I am the grandniece of the famous artist Alfons Zeilais. More than 100 years ago, at the end of the 19th century, Germany had an emperor and a democracy. How did this work? How did this compare to the system of the United States of America? Who was allowed to vote in Germany? Rich or poor? Men, women? Was Alphonse Zeilais and his wife Elizabeth allowed to vote? You will learn about this in this video. In 1871, the first German nation-state was created with the founding of the German Empire. The German Empire was a constitutional monarchy. In Europe today, there are still monarchies with the monarch as their representative, namely the United Kingdom, Spain, Sweden, Norway, the Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, to name but a few. The German Empire had the following structure. The Emperor of the German Empire was also King of Prussia. The Emperorship was hereditary. If an Emperor died, the office was passed on to his eldest male descendant. He represented the German Empire externally, had supreme command over the military and the navy and could declare war together with the Bundesrat, as well as dissolve the Reichstag prematurely together with the Bundesrat. There was no real separation of powers, with legislature, executive and jurisdiction, rather a kind of intertwining of powers. The constitution granted far-reaching prerogatives to the emperor as the executive. The military, foreign policy and the imperial administration were largely removed from the influence of parliament, and above all, the appointment of the government depended solely on the confidence of the Emperor, right up to the final phase of the First World War and not on the majority in Parliament. The Emperor appointed the Imperial Chancellor, who was practically identical to the Prussian Prime Minister throughout. The Imperial Chancellor appointed State Secretaries for the departments. There were no ministers at that time. The state secretaries reported to the imperial chancellor, not to the emperor. In addition, the imperial chancellor chaired the federal council. This consisted of the princes of the 25 federal states and three cities, which is the cities of Bremen, Hamburg and Lübeck, who usually sent representatives. The press occasionally criticized that these representatives were not the brightest. There were 58 seats and thus votes. The Reichstag consisted of 382 deputies in 1871 and 397 deputies from 1874, because 15 constituencies of Alsace-Lorraine were added. The Reichstag was elected by universal, direct and secret suffrage by the male population over the age of 25. Men in military service were not allowed to vote so that the military was not politicized. Men who were dependent on public poor relief, who were insolvent or who were incapacitated or deprived of their civil rights, were also not allowed to vote. The constituencies were based on the 1864 census. They were not changed until the end of the empire. Industrialization caused a strong influx into the big cities and the industrial centers. In 1912, there were finally 12 constituencies with less than 75,000 inhabitants, but also 12 constituencies with more than 400,000 inhabitants. The cities and industrial centers were underrepresented as a result of this development, which disadvantaged the Social Democrats as incidentally did the voting age of 25. Nevertheless, this suffrage was tremendously progressive. In the Kingdom of Bavaria, only those who had paid taxes for at least six months were allowed to vote, from 1906 even 12 months. The Bavarian electoral law thus 
and with the division of electoral districts also disadvantaged the Social Democrats and favored the Liberals. From 1881 onwards, the election in Bavaria was secret. In Prussia, there was even a three-class electoral system. The first class consisted of large landowners and aristocrats who paid a particularly high amount of taxes, until one-third of the tax revenue was paid. The second class consisted of merchants and industrialists, who paid the most taxes until another third was paid. And the third class consisted of everyone below that level. Each class elected an identical number of electors, who then elected the members of the House of Representatives of Prussia. In 1898 this meant that the first class included 3.3% of those eligible to vote, the second class 11.4% of those eligible to vote, and the last class 85.3%. That this electoral law favored the conservatives is obvious. Alphonse Zeilleis was born in July 1887. He therefore turned 25 in July 1912 and was allowed to vote in the empire. The last election for the Reichstag before the First World War took place in January 1912. Thus, Alphonse Zeilleis never had the opportunity to vote in the empire. Incidentally, Alphonse Zeilleis was also not allowed to vote in the second chamber of the Bavarian parliament because he had not paid enough taxes for long enough. And his wife Elizabeth? Elizabeth was not allowed to vote at all in the German Empire because she was a woman. Let us compare the German situation with the situation of the mother of all democracies. The United States of America. Until Independence Day, the American states were mostly colonies of the British Empire, which was a parliamentary democracy similar to the German Empire. This means a king ruled these American states. This changed radically with the Constitution. On the 4th of July 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted by the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia. The Constitution of the United States of America is still valid today with amendments. In contrast to the German Empire, the United States of America had a separation of powers with a legislative and executive branch and a judicial branch with a system of checks and balances. The legislative branch will not be part of the following description. A chancellor or prime minister does not exist. The president of the United States is head of state, head of government and commander in chief of the armed forces. He appoints his cabinet, the state secretaries and federal officials, a rather strong office. The Federal Council can be compared to the Senate. Until 2013, the federal states were chosen by the state legislatures, not by popular vote. The US House of Representatives corresponds to the Reichstag. Men over 21 had the right to vote. From 1920, also women. In 1971, the age was reduced to 18. Senate and House of Representatives form the United States Congress, which controls the President of the United States, enacts legislation and has the right to declare war. The President of the United States is elected indirectly through an electoral college. Around 1900, less than a quarter of the people living in the United States of America had the right to vote. In Germany, the situation was not different. Thank you for following me in the democratic system of the imperial age. In the next video we will talk about art. What is art? Who determines what is bought for the museums and what is collected? What does this all have to do with the emperor and Alphonse Zeilleis?
You will learn about all this in the next video. I look forward to seeing you there.